Today on the program, we are going to look at uh, the success and, of course, uh, the victory story of uh, Donald Trump coming in for the second time as uh, the president of the uh, U.S. So, well, uh, world leaders are still making their congratulatory messages to Donald Trump. And, of course, we've uh, seen a series of African leaders, including our own president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, you know, congratulating uh, Donald Trump on the success of his election. But one thing that stands clear is uh, the question uh, that world leaders, uh, most especially African leaders, keep on asking. That with Donald Trump as uh, the president of the uh, United States of America for the second time, what does it hold for Africa as a continent? Uh, is it going to be a replication of what we saw in the first uh, tenure, whereby uh, we saw little, you know, little, very, very little, except the fact that uh, uh, some issues that has to do with uh, security, uh, like what happened in uh, Nigeria. Donald Trump somehow facilitated uh, the purchasing of uh, the Tokano jets uh, that uh, that uh, presidency, you know, bought then to fight the Boko Haram. So apart from that, uh, some other things, uh, you know, that we cannot readily remember that Donald Trump really did for Africa. So for lots of uh, people, uh, they are really not, um, uh, you know, expecting much. But here we are today, we're going to be looking at the issues one more time, and let's see how the second coming of uh, Donald Trump as uh, the president of the United States of America, what it's going to mean for Africa. And of course, to discuss all this uh, this afternoon, we are so privileged to have a professor from the University of Benin and uh, the Deputy uh, Vice Chancellor uh, Ekewan Campos. I'm talking about Professor Adishino Buyinami uh, Ayende. So, you welcome to the program Africa Discuss. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. And also, too, if time will permit us, we are also going to be having uh, Honorable Johnson Agmonaima via uh, Zoom. He's going to be joining us from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. And uh, he likes uh, to talk about Donald Trump and also as it relates to support that uh, Donald Trump can give to Africa as, as a continent. So when we have him, we're going to be uh, letting him come into the show so that uh, uh, we can have uh, his own contribution. All right, so it has uh, become clear that Donald Trump has uh, landed at the U.S. presidency for the second time, and uh, leaders uh, from across Africa began uh, tweeting uh, their congratulatory messages. Uh, we understand that uh, the Zimbabwean uh, leader stands uh, ready to work with uh, you, as uh, he has uh, wrote to President, uh, uh, former President Donald Trump and the, the incoming presidents of America now. And uh, also, to back home, uh, we understand that uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu also expressed hope that uh, Trump's uh, second term would bring a re reciprocal economic and development uh, a partnership between Africa and the United States of America. All right, so what we're going to be doing here this afternoon, we're going to be looking at the various ways that um, uh, we, we, we try to look at how Donald Trump was uh, in the first uh, term and how he may come uh, make contributions uh, in Africa in this uh, second term. We'll talk about trade and investment, and of course we'll also go ahead to look at uh, aid uh, to Africa continent, uh, immigration, or it's also going to be there, security and conflict, and also to we also uh, look at some other issues that uh, we interest you. All right, so Prof. Now, uh, when we look at uh, Donald Trump's, uh, you know, first tenure, and now that he's coming back as uh, the president of, uh, of America, uh, do we see any anything hopeful for the continent of Africa? Well, of course, uh, uh, the president-elect Donald Trump is uh, a very well-known man to uh, all African leaders, both past and uh, present. And majority of them are still very much abreast with the various activities that he did. If you look at uh, the area of um, AIDS, of course, before his regime, AIDS were being sent to Africa. During his regime, he tried to look at the reasons why these um, AIDS are being sent. And the fear of them was that the, the, the AIDS would be reduced. And one could uh, also understand that from the point of view, from the viewpoint of uh, Donald Trump himself, seeing Africa, seeing Americans as Americans first. Mm. In whatever he wants to do, 
he sees uh, America and Americans as the first consideration. Um, that's in a way supposed to send strong message to African leaders that whatever they also want to do, they should consider their people first, the welfare of their people. So when he considered that the amount of aid they sent to Africa was uh, becoming too much, one would not blame him because such aids automatically ought to be used for the development of, of, American and, of America and Americans. So looking at it from that angle, our people ought to also have to ginger up to look at the ways through which we can develop ourselves by way of developmental projects that will not necessarily mean that we have to rely solely on what comes from outside. Mm. Because such it, come to think of it, it's, uh, there is no free gift anywhere, not even free food anywhere, not even in free town. They are products of things that they take from Africa, using such aids as a kind of bait or pseudo love for Africa, as if such aids are not coming. It's like um, taking something from Africa and then giving you part of it as by way or by, by, by looking at it as if um, act of charity, that we are richer than you. And to me, if uh, just others, as others have observed in the, in the past, if you have resources, you have human resources, you have um, mineral resources that you can explore to develop your country, to develop your state. Why don't you venture into that? Instead of um, calling the foreigners to come and do all that for you and then request for uh, pittance at the end of the day, which those people will see as, um, as charity. Mm. It's something that we have to look into seriously in the continent okay. so that the next generation will have something good to start working with. Mm. All right, so there's no doubt about that, that uh, we as a continent we also need to look inward and see how we can uh, develop our continent. But uh, one thing that starts clear is... Uh, uh, the presence of America in the world. It is uh, perhaps not only Africa that solicits <laughs> for the uh, attention of uh, United States of America. Uh, most nations of the world, even the Great Britain, uh, you know, whether we like it or not somehow, uh, they also want the assistance, uh, the cooperation of the U.S. But let's stretch it further now. Now, uh, we have seen the last uh, four years, uh, you know, uh, with uh, the emergence of uh, uh, Russia, you know, making incursions into the political space of uh, countries in Africa. And uh, I little wonder whether Joe Biden may want to throw that line. Because uh, it's somehow complicated. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I beg your pardon now. It's somehow complicated. Now, uh, we have a situation whereby uh, Donald Trump is a personal friend to Vladimir Putin of Russia. And again... Uh, U.S. As it, as it stands, U.S. as a nation seems not to be in good relationship with uh, Russia. So how do we look at all that vis-a-vis uh, -vis whether uh, the U.S. Uh, may want to continue from uh, where Russia yeah. stopped in, in Africa? Well, one thing we have to, to know, which is uh, fundamental, is that the foreign policy of America is uh, more or less the same, whether you have Republicans or, or you Democrats. have the de Democrats as leaders, I mean, as president. Mm. They both told the same line of this uh, mentality to sustain the foreign policy, mm. particularly be based on uh, Monroe Declaration. Mm. The Monroe Declaration started long, long ago with uh, one of the presidents of uh, America, who believed that, as it were then, the South American, uh, Southern American countries that were colonized mm. by the Europeans, they should find a way of curbing the incursion of uh, the Europeans back into uh, Southern American countries. And then that eventually became effective. Mm. And through that, the, 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 the subsequent uh, president started extending that to other parts of the world. And that explains the reason why you have the full presence of um, America and American forces mm. in Europe today. Mm. 
mm. in substantial part of Asia and also in Africa. Mm. So it's this extension of the hegemony that we must rule the entire world. Mm. That is what we are having today. Mm. And but, we, but we saw that lead to recently, most especially uh, with um, how the U.S. left NAG. We saw that, uh, you know, uh, scarcely recently. Well, the, 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 I, I was coming to that. Okay. Because um, the Cold War, which also started some time ago, which eventually led to the dissolution of the former USSR. Mm. Now, you have Russia, that is the main opposition. China is just coming up. So that is why you have this, by the time the, we have issues, we have problems in various African countries, China is coming gradually to assist in one form or another, which more or less America is seen as a rival. Mm. Russia has been there as an old driver as well. Mm. So the three of them, to a large extent, are, as well as Europe, they feel that the only way they can, they can continue to get most of their resources is by subjugating Africa. It's like now saying that I'm ready to accept you. This one is not being fair to you. Mm. Come to this side, we'll protect you more. Mm. That is what Russia, that is what China, are, I mean, the two of them are now doing on the soils of Africa. Now, America coming back to the hands of um, uh, Donald Trump, mm. we also have to find a way, we also want to find a way to push this opposition, opposing groups, mm. so to speak. I mean, antagonizing uh, China, antagonizing, opposing uh, Russia, uh, Russia in Caution, yeah. into Africa. Mm. And through that, it may want to start opening the ideas of developmental projects, which, whether we like it or not, just as they are doing, all are Greek gifts. Mm. Nothing goes for nothing. For free, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That is the way the, the I feel it may also want to go. All right, so what we're saying invariably is that uh, Africa stands, may stand to gain. Uh, well, we, 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 we stand to gain, and then much as we stand to gain, we should also start looking at the possibilities of utilizing what we have. Mm. Because um, one of the areas that I believe Donald Trump may also want to look at is the area of uh, immigration, mm. uh, the, the incursion of... Uh, Africans, Asians, uh, other parts, I mean, the, the Southern Americans into America uh, uh, yeah. through, through Mexico. Mm -hmm. Because um, it was reported 2022, they had about 13,000 Africans mm -hmm. that were recorded at the Mexican uh, border. Uh, border. Yeah, yeah. Now, in 2023, it increased to 58,000. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, multiples of 13, and that is times four, mm -hmm. of uh, what they had in um, 2022. Mm -hmm. And 2024, we don't, know, we don't have the figure yet, mm -hmm. but that means that the incursion of these people or the way the people are leaving the continent, he may also have to look into that. Mm -hmm. Because if the continent is good, if uh, major, the majority, a major part of the continent is good, little for other parts of the world, there will be no reason for anyone to risk his or her life. So go to the U.S. So go to the U.S. Yeah. Because when you get there as well, it's not that um, from what we do here, from what we do read, mm -hmm. it's not a um, bed of roses everywhere. Mm -hmm. so, and since they will be also be considering, based on this slogan, mm -hmm. Americans first. Yeah, that slogan, Americans first now, uh, it makes us to want to ask, uh, where do we think Donald Trump is going to start from? Uh, is it going to start looking inward uh, to fix uh, the issues uh, back home first or to start uh, looking at outwards, uh, you know, having the belief that uh, when outside is fixed, when the issues outside America are, are fixed, uh, perhaps the issues at home will be settled? Well, he has, a, he has a big work at hand. To do. To do. Mm. Because much as you feel that um, it's because these people have a major reason for them to leave their countries to come to America. Why don't you look at the ways of fixing those places before, so that so as to reduce the incursion, the rate at which they people want migrate, they, yeah. want to, they want to migrate to America. Yeah. Now, that may be one of the challenges. Mm. And equally, the issue of wars, the issue of conflicts that you have in various parts of the world, mm. some of which you cannot also uh, divorce the ants of America from. 
Mm. Uh, they are well entrenched. They are all. They are. They are. They're very deep, deeply involved. Mm. In most of the, this crisis mm. is it um, the okay. Okay. Asian crisis that you want to talk about? Mm. Is it uh, that of Ukraine that you want to talk about? Little mm. for other parts of the world where people might be having one form of conflict or another because there is no country i believe do you find any country in the world that america is not interested in their internal politics mm -hmm. to know who eventually rules them that will be a favor to the america and americans okay we will we'll take a pause on you uh we are so privileged to have honorable ej agmanaima now on set uh journals are virtually and of course uh, is joining us from uh, the federal capital territory uh, abuja honorable good afternoon yeah. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you to our viewers. Yeah, I must appreciate you. I know it's uh, very tight, uh, but uh, despite the very short uh, uh, invitation, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Yes, All right. thank you. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I, yeah, I have to read... For your information, I I'm in Benin. I'm oh, not in oh. Abuja, but I'm in Benin. All right, uh, all right, all right. All right, so I have to read one or two things about uh, your concern, uh, talking about uh, U.S.-Africa uh, relationship and all that. Now that we have a new president-elect in the U.S., now we are looking at uh, what Donald Trump, what Africa as a continent, what we stand to gain as uh, from January that we're going to be having a new president in America. Well, uh, I, I just want to first of all congratulate him. Uh, for the victory, not just only winning the popular vote, also winning the electoral college vote. That people came around Emmons to give him the moral support. Why do you think that uh, everybody is not talking about Donald Trump? Because of what he stands for. Uh, most of all, they have never voted, you know, for Republican all the time. But I'll tell you this time, not just only I voted, a lot of our brothers, Nigerian Americans, voted for him. And uh, a lot of expectation from people from Africa, not just only Africa, globally, uh, are not, you know, concerned about uh, what they think that Donald Trump would bring to bear. But I know for a fact one thing uh, because uh, governance is not just about one person, it requires the collective efforts of every uh, Americans. But what bothers on majority of the Americans was the issue of uh, morality. And uh, that's why uh, most uh, uh, clergymen, you know, evangelical, also advisory, um, men and women of faith, Christian community came airmans to support him. Yes. Let me start from Nigeria, talking about Africa, what we expect, what we, you know, expect to gain from, uh, you know, his administration. Uh, in the past, I think when I was in the House of Reps, I was the chairman of U.S. Nigeria parliamentary relations. And I can tell you that when Obama was president of the United States of America, he failed, he refused to sell arms to Nigeria to combat Boko Haram, the terrorist group, the insurgency. But here, you know, Donald Trump, becoming president then, was able to approve for Nigeria to be able to purchase arms. And I would have believed, I thought that uh, Obama, that I would believe, I thought that uh, is an African that would have supported Nigeria to acquire arms, but he refused. It was Donald Trump that came to our aid. I could remember how many times I visited the U.S., myself and the former speaker, Dugara, and uh, we met with some of the congressmen and women, pleading and asking them because of the Lee law at the United States Congress. And uh, I can tell you that uh, Donald Trump came to Nigeria's aid. I have no doubt in my mind that uh, Donald Trump will support Nigeria and Africa and beyond, but most especially, morality must be something we almost appreciate that removing God in governance is a total failure. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump have often said that we must have God. God is the ultimate and American first before any other 
country, you know. But today is not the president elect. So I don't expect anything more than what I believe he has done before. But talking about the immigration and uh, people have been crying, oh, it's going to you know deport uh, you know immigrants. Definitely, if you are illegal, an illegal alien coming through the border illegally, you don't expect to live there. A lot of uh, illegal aliens that have come from far and near, from other part of the world, who left prisons to come to America, uh, today are in America. A lot of them are they're kidnapping, killing people, causing murder, robbery, and that's what he's saying. Those who want to live like Nigeria, genuinely, legitimately, to go to America, have the right to do that. But a lot of them are denied visa. They are left open, very porous. They are allowed, you know, people to just come into the United States. Whereas those who want to come to America, haven't been able to obtain visa, they have made it very difficult. Sometimes to get an appointment at the U.S. Embassy, it takes forever. They will send no appointment. But you are able to have people coming from the border into the United States. And to the detriment to all other Americans. And uh, where you have spent billions of taxpayer money, you know, for this, you know, illegal immigrant. When other Americans are suffering, homeless, and you're talking about, oh, that uh, oh, you want to move America to the highest pedigree. But the failure of Biden, Obama, and Kamala Harris is what led for Donald Trump to win overwhelmingly in America. Some of you might not understand the politics of the United States of America. I have lived there. I lived there for over 31 years. I have voted from far back. In 1987, I was a coordinator for Cathy with Maya, who became the mayor. I've supported a lot of mayors, Lee, Mayor Lee Brown, you know, Mayor Turner, and Congressman Marshall, that's Lee of blessed memory, former President Bill Clinton, and former President George Bush. When President Clinton was president, he visited Nigeria. After he left presidency, he visited Nigeria. When George Bush, as a Republican, was president, he visited Nigeria. When he left presidency, he has often visited Nigeria. But let me tell you, an African president, Obama, that we all supported and gave so much support to, refused to visit Nigeria. Rather, he did send the Secretary of State to, and to Nigeria. Nigeria is not a second-class country. Yes, it's only when they need oil, they need mineral resources that they remember Nigeria. If Obama could not allow Nigeria to acquire arms to fight Boko Haram insurgency, why should I support him? Why should I support Biden and support Kalama Harris? The reason why we all supported Donald Trump is because the way he has stood for Nigeria and Africa. So that is uh, the, my own submission that, look, the truth must be told that Donald Trump, he means well because how do you now, in five years old children, children are being taught in school that you don't need their parents' consent to change them from female to male, from male to female. That is an aberration. That is unfair. That's immoral. And I don't stand for that. That is not biblical. That is not Christian. So we are Christian based with faith and having the faith of God that God created all of us to be man and a woman and a woman and a man. I remember when the missionary first came to Africa that they said one man, one woman, that nobody should marry more than one wife. They told us that, but today it's the other way around. Okay. I don't have no problem whatever they want to be. The yeah. LGBT, it is their own private life. But don't use it to rob off others. All right, so, uh, Honorable... This is not uh, the time to uh, embark on such a journey. Yeah, Honorable, uh, let's quickly go back yes, to, go ahead. Uh, uh, you know, something that most Nigerians are so concerned about. Now, uh, on, on air, there are words that I cannot use. But for the purpose of understanding this uh, discourse uh, this afternoon, Remember this same um, Donald Trump, uh, you know, used a derogatory word against African nations. Uh, he said Shit that he referred to us as, as S, I leave it there, S whole. That's the way he referred to African nations. And Nigeria was also inclusive. That is one. Then secondly, I remember this same um, Donald Trump. Now, uh, lots of Nigerians, uh, prospective 
uh, beneficiaries of immigration benefits. But when Donald Trump came on board in the first tenure, uh, he placed executive orders that stopped, uh, you know, those uh, guys from uh, attaining those, uh, 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 you know, benefits. Now, so with that kind of presidency, are we saying that uh, there are hopes or there is hope for, for Nigeria as it were? Uh, my dear, let me tell you this. There are a lot of uh, cheap blackmail by the mainstream media. I call them corrupt network news. That will not see anything good to say about Donald Trump. Yes, he's not perfect. Neither am I perfect. Or even you. You are not even perfect. None of us is perfect. We only try to be Christ-like. We can never be Christ. Never can we be Christ. We want to do those things to make you know, our country, the world, to have a peaceful coexistence. But I'm telling you, you are saying that when he said, people say he said, Nigeria, Africa is a shithole. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me be frank. Have you seen any American bringing their own money to pull in Nigeria's bank? It is only with Nigeria that we take, we steal billions and trillions, take it to other part of the world to put it in America, Swiss bank, Britain, you. United Kingdom, Canada. Have you seen any American bringing their own money? When he said that, look at it beyond reasonable doubt. That look, today, every home you have borehole. Everywhere, where, where are the healthcare system? Where are the good schools? Where are the, you know, good roads? Where are they? So he, is, he has always said that with the, God has blessed Nigeria so much, with enormous mineral resources, human capacity, human capital, we have it. What is strong? Mr. President, Tinipu cannot deliver Nigeria by himself. He needs the collective effort patriotic Nigerian All right, honorable, to make Nigeria we, we, a better place we, we, for, one, yeah, for every one of us. Yeah. Like I said before, our president, Donald Trump, being re-elected was as a result of the failure of Biden, Kamala Harris, and uh, Barack Obama, because they have not handled the situation well. When Clinton was president, things were far better. Like people ask me, I said the first African president that ever governed America is Mr. B. Clinton. Because he was there for everybody, black, red, white, yellow. He was able to take care of everyone. But this Biden government have really shown of incompetency. I'm not missing words. That was the reason over the years that I've been voting as a Democrat. This time, apart from the time I voted for George Bush as a Republican, this time, I have to mobilize Nigerian Americans to vote for Donald Trump, like I said before. Because someone who believes that God is the ultimate, who want God to be praised, who want God to be in government, who want God to be in school, so that prayers in schools are not something we should toy with. Who want every American we believe that we are all created by God and we are all the same. Even though that the mainstream media will want to paint Donald Trump black, bad. But I can tell you, I, have the, I had the opportunity many years ago to interact with this, this man. This is not what people are saying about him. And there are many black Americans who came this time, who supported him. Majority of Americans came out, Latino, Mexican, minority people came out. Those eligible to vote were able to cast their vote for Donald Trump because he believed in God. He did not believe in this issue where today children, children are taught in school that you don't need their parents' consent to change their gender from male to female, female to male. Five years old, six years old, seven years old. For God's sake, what kind of life are we living? This is not about Donald Trump. It's about immorality 
in the high places that we must have to destroy. And that is what that that, that is what has happened by voting for Donald Trump is to tell Americans, to tell Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that look, you can't play God. We cannot play God. God is the omnipotent, the omniscient, the great I am. He will always remain God. You cannot. Because they play God, and that is why it turned the other way around. Today, okay, I, 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 they are blaming, they are having a blame game. Oh, it is Biden that caused their loss. No, it is not Biden. It is their action, their attitude, the way they have governed America. When Donald Trump was president, America was booming. Yes. Listen, I have some friends of recent, they went to the embassy to obtain, to at least to seek for U.S. visa. These are billionaires, men that have worked so hard in their life. They were turned down, they were denied visa. But you are allowing immigrants to cross the border. Some of those that left prison in another part of the world, that today they are killing people, robbing people, to the detriment of Nigerian all Americans. Okay. Right, so let me let me pause you. I, 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 I'll, I'll pause you. I'll pause you so that uh, we get uh, Professor in uh, on the show one more time. Now, Professor, uh, you heard uh, what Honorable has said. Uh, you know that Americans reacted to uh, perhaps uh, the economy uh, in the U.S. that has gone uh, so bad. Uh, that's why they voted against uh, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and voted in uh, Donald Trump. But little wonder, because you, you know a while ago we talked about the issue of time. Whether Donald Trump has enough time. We are looking at a government that is going to spend another four, four years. years. Mm -hmm. Does he have the time to fix America back uh, one more time? On, well, on, the, on, uh, on I, I, won't say, I won't say he doesn't have the time because... Uh, they are on there. They don't work. They don't work on policy somersault mm. as we do here. Mm. Uh, take for instance, we have a government in place now. All the policies, national policies, that uh, we probably had under the former regime. Forget about the fact that they are of the same party. There are some of them that this government may decide to revise. Mm. But there, you have policies that could be put in place. For a period of 25 years, remember the one they call uh, AGOA, mm. African Growth uh, Opportunity uh, uh, Act. Uh, yes. That yes. was there, that was put in place in the, 2000, the year 2000. Yeah, the one that has to do with uh, uh, investment support. With investment yeah, support yeah, yeah. that um, involved the, the, the exportation of African products to into the US, into the uh, US uh, yeah. without, uh, with like tax, tariff. without any tariff. Uh, yeah. Now, by 2025, it will elapsed. Mm. So 2020, 2000 to 2025, mm. you have series of government that have come on board, mm. that have left. Mm. So, but because they felt that this is a policy that is going to have a long-term effect mm. on Africa, mm. they allow it to, so, to, mm. to persist. Mm. Although there are fears now that now that Trump is there, mm. he may want to revive, he may not eventually renew it. But, uh, but yeah, for a, but Trump for is a, America first, yes. so he's not going to renew yes. it. Yes, but for, for a policy to have been operated for a period of 25 years, mm. automatically you won't say the government did not try enough. Mm. Because within the period of 25 years, Africans or participants in this uh, deal may, must have been able to gain something substantial, mm. which coming back to what we said earlier on, if we have been also been interested in our own people, in our own respective nations as Africans, such opportunity ought to have been plowed back to the soils of Africa to develop Africa. Now coming back to the reasons why they, I mean, uh, Biden had to lose. Biden had to lose for some of the reasons that uh, uh, honorable mentioned, mm. no doubt about it. Mm. And the same way we have here, when we have a government that is not living up to the aspirations of the people, we have to change such government. Mm. Come to think of it, the issue of PECFA, the one that is attached to the financing of uh, uh, HIV AIDS mm. in Africa, mm. which of course, apart from being responsible for financing HIV, they also promote abortion. Mm. It's one of the things that we feel by the time uh, the Trump comes on board, he, will abolish. he is going to abolish. Yeah. That is a good one, to be, to be frank. I mean, the abortion as aspect of it. Mm. Because it's not too far from 
what the, the, the honorable mention uh, the LGBT you know, rights. LGBT rights. Uh, yeah. Because where is it done? There is nothing what we believe as Christians, as Muslims, as atheists, mm. is that when God decides something, God doesn't make, doesn't make a mistake. Yeah, yeah. But for one to start telling a child of five years, four years, that you it was you you supposed to come as a male. It was a mistake that you appear you are appearing as a as a female. Mm. Now telling some child to decide whether he or she wants to remain the sex that uh, the gender that he, uh, that he has found himself. Yeah. And when he decides to change, or when she decides to change, you don't have that opportunity and you don't have that right as the teacher. Mm. When such change is made real, right there in the school or the school premises, mm. you cannot tell the parent that this is what your child is up to. Yeah. And you know, the kind of psychological trauma that such child goes eventually through. goes through. Yeah. By the time he or she feels that what others are doing, I want to start experiencing that. Yeah. And the person can be told, well, this is what you have. Mm. You know, it's like taking God out of whatever people are doing. Mm -hmm. And that is not proper. Okay. All right. So, Honorable, uh, we still have you there. Now, Honorable, uh, little wonder whether Donald Trump can uh, protect uh, his country again. Because uh, in 20, 2019, 2020, now we saw a pandemic that swept uh, through the whole world. And as a matter of fact, uh, United States of America was worse a hit. And uh, uh, a lot of analysts have said that that was probably one of the reasons why uh, Donald Trump lost out to Joe Biden. I mean, Donald Trump could not protect America against uh, COVID-19. So what is the assurance at this time that if another uh, pandemic, perhaps another pandemic hits the world and hits America, that Donald Trump would have learned his lessons? I mean, you are an ardent, uh, you know, uh, a person that has Support interest that. so much on Donald Trump. Uh, you know, that is, uh, that is an interesting question that you just raised. Mm. Let me tell you that uh, Donald Trump won that, that election. Let me get that straight. He won that election. The COVID that came, that caused havoc to the whole world, many Americans lost their life. A lot of my friends, my relatives, lost their life in America. And I can tell you Donald Trump did excellently well. It, Donald Trump was not the creation of COVID-19. Yeah, but, but he downplayed he on not. it. I mean, he, 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 he chided no, with he it. He never downplayed. Listen to me. He worked so hard. I traveled to U.S. I was in the U.S. at the time. I can tell you that he did all that he could to put America first in protecting and making sure that preventive measure was put in place. Everybody, every country all over the world, we're all going through the same pain agony. Not only America, Nigeria. Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians died. A very close friend of ours from Edo State, and Ahomu, died, and many others here in this country, in Nigeria. In America, Donald Trump did, did, he did everything in, in, in his own capacity. And again, because of that, he won that election, but the election was stolen through the back door. A lot of people might not believe it, but I know it for a fact that the election was stolen. And when he said that election was stolen, he, he meant it, and it is it is factual, and it is true. Because of the mainstream media, have decided to pet him from morning to night. They have nothing good to say about Donald Trump. All they have to say negative things about him, but nobody talks about the immorality that have been placed in America by Democrats, led by Obama and Biden and Kamala Harris. The failure of Democrats today is as a result of the immorality they have brought to bear. Nobody's talking about that. We have children. I have family there. My children are there. I have cousins. I have some of my 
relative. In California today, they are children five years old, six years old. They say, Uncle, Uncle Daddy, we are tired. We probably have to do something else. My children be taught in school. Reading, showing them sexual, you know, sexual, you know, books. Showing them books, showing men and women, men and men having sex, women and women having sex. Mm, let's be careful showing with them that in now. Classroom, for God's sake. Mm. What kind of immorality is that? So I am saying that Donald Trump did well when he was president, the economy was booming. To be honest to you, even my children, my children said, Daddy, when Donald Trump was president, the economy was booming. Yeah, but honorable, we, 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 we must also remember that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what the U.S. seems to be going through now may be a ripple's effect of what the, the world is going through. I mean, the whole world is going through economic, some form of economic uh, quagmire. Don't you think so? Yes, but that no, we started, my brother. Economic quagmire was not created by Donald Trump. But I'm telling you that when Donald Trump was president, the economy was booming. Do you know what he did? A lot of the manufacturers, a lot of industry that left America to China to other part of the world, when Donald Trump came, he gave them an incentive. He brought a lot of those industries back to America. America was booming. Employment was on the higher side. So that is what Donald Trump did by giving them tax rebates. Mm. That is what he did. But Biden refused to do that. Do you know today? The economy of America, eh? It is state of comatose. But just watch as the truck comes in, you will see the changes. Okay. I'm not All saying right, so this because I want to say it. I'm saying it because this is these are facts. Mm. I don't need to tell you. Everything I'm saying are facts. All right. So is the as economy, we comment is it right this now, sense is it now. right now zero? But immorality in America is it good? Bad zero. Uh, all right, honorable. If you remove so, God, yeah. you say you don't want God. You say in God we trust. Even in dollar, look at their currency. In God we trust. We trust. Yeah, but do they really trust God? Mm. All right, so honorable. The reason why the Christian community, uh, as we the commence our discussion now, Council, yeah, they all came out. Amen. Yeah, was by Donald Trump. Honorable. Black American, black African. Nigeria American. Yeah, let me bring the professor in. Let me bring the professor in. I'll come back to you so that we'll wrap it up together. Now, Prof, now uh, we have a new terrorist organization Thank in you Nigeria. Very just that just broke out some a few days ago. Now, uh, Donald Trump in his first uh, tenure ordered uh, the purchase of the Tucano jets and all that. Kudos to him and all that. But here we are again to ask the question whether this time uh, he's going to do it uh, uh, the second time. Because uh, the new terrorist organization now s seems to be sweeping through uh, the uh, uh, Nigeria, Niji, and all that and all that. So Donald Trump coming back. Well, the, as far as... Uh the government, his government is concerned. He may also want to decide to assist Nigeria in terms of um, curbing the terrorism that is ravaging the entire nation. Okay. But much as he does that, mm. uh, we also on our side, we're supposed to do our own homework mm. in terms of knowing those that are responsible for the proliferation of these uh terrorist organizations organizations yeah. in our society mm -hmm. because if uh, the government is is ready to take the bull by the own you know certain persons that are responsible deal with them decisively by the time you do that the rate at which people get into it will, will reduce mm. and then the oxygen that is the finances that comes from um, that come from different parts of uh, places but from individuals or from organizations, all that can be curtailed. Yeah. But if we say we, are, we, we fear the backlash, we are preparing for another election in 2027, we don't want to hurt the populace. At the end of the day, we, don't do, we decide not to do what we're supposed to. There is no way, even outsiders, will find it difficult to, to assist. Mm. Because look at what is happening in uh, Mali, in, uh, in Burkina Niger. Faso, in Niger, in Niger. Yeah. you just look at that axis. In Sudan, in Sudan, yeah. part of Chad. Yeah. Then you come to Nigeria, mm. yeah, and then the same part, the part of Cameroon as well. Mm. 
who can be who, who do we say could be responsible responsible for all this okay because right. look, look at the weapons that each of these terrorist but terrorists are, 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 using, are, yeah. are using yeah none of them i can say all right, so uh, honorable, it's, uh, it's found in this. I mean, it's produced in the soil, I mean, the source of Africa. Beautiful, that honorable. Let's get your parting words just one minute quickly, sir. Yes, uh, my prayer is that uh, God to give him good health. The good health is, is worth and longevity, give it the wisdom to follow the affair of America so that the Americans and the world can have peace. I tell you, if Donald Trump had been the president by now, the war between Russia and Ukraine would have taken place. Mm -hmm. The war between uh, Israel, Gaza, and Hamas would have taken place. It's as a failure of the Democrat that does not want peace. You know, they have always been propagating, you know, a supporting war to the detriment of Niger Americans, spending billions of taxpayers' money. But when Nigeria was in need, they never care about Nigeria. All right, Honorable, thank you Nigeria so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we we care. appreciate it. But time. Donald Trump came to Nigeria's aid. Mm. So uh, that is the reason why I have always thrown my support. I all right, so, Donald Trump. Uh, Prof, 10 seconds, is... quickly. Quickly, Prof, 10 well, seconds. Well, we pray that uh, its regime we, pray, we bring peace to the entire world, mm. not only to Africans, because um, there is no part of the world that is settled. Okay. And majority of these have the hands of the Americans, mm. whether directly or indirectly. Mm. If, um, as is there, is granted the opportunity of having wisdom, maybe all these, most of these things will be covered. All right, there, so will be peace, more, there will be more peace in the entire world. All right, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, Professor Buyin and me, uh, additional Ayinde, uh, professor with uh, the with, uh, University of Benin, and of course, uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, I came on campus for the University of Maine. Thank you so much, sir. You are welcome. Thank and you also, very Honorable E.J. Agbonaima, thank you so much for finding time to join us on the show today. Mm. All right, so that's uh, the program. Uh, so time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, we'll see how the AIDS will come to Africa as uh, Donald Trump uh, is going to be sworn in sometime in January 2025 as uh, U.S. President. So the program today, Africa Discourse on Independent Television. Until the same time, uh, next week, goodbye and God bless you.